Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, I've come outside so that I can read some more of a sumo to you. Okay, it's a pidgey in the tree up there. Okay, I think this setup's good. Change your t-shirt. So I kind of left you earlier with a very short video uh, with three questions. I'm going to recap. So chapter two, change your t-shirt. So let's build upon what we've already been exploring in the previous chapter. E plus R equals O. Let me start by asking you the same two questions I ask people when I'm running a seminar or speaking at a conference. Firstly, do you drive a car? And secondly, did you get yourself dressed this morning? If you answer yes to either question, you'll relate to the following fact. Much of what we do in life, we do without consciously thinking about it. Ever had the experience of taking a familiar car journey and suddenly finding yourself at your destination and wondering, how did I get here? Or find yourself driving on the motorway and asking yourself, what happened to those last 10 miles? When you got dressed this morning, did you consciously decide in what order to get dressed? Did you weigh up the pros and cons of which shoe to put on first? If not, then you probably identify with the concept I call autopilot syndrome. We are about to go on a journey, except on this journey, I want you to be very conscious of where you are going and how you get there. To do so, your first step in the sumo process is to ensure that you take time out off autopilot and honestly assess how you have been living your life so far. To help you do this, here are three questions to consider. Number one, which person has the biggest influence on your life? Number two, who deserves the most credit for where you currently find yourself in life? And number three, whose, whose advice and opinions do you tend to always act upon? Let me share with you my answers, although I have to confess they would not always have been my response. Number one, which person has the biggest influence on your life? I do. Number two, who deserves the most credit for where you currently find yourself in life? I do. Number three, whose advice and opinions do you tend to always act upon? My own. How do they match yours? Well, they were exactly what my answers was, were. And I was like, it's myself. The answer to all of those questions. And I was like, I wonder if like, I don't think there's a wrong, is there a wrong or right answer, but they were the answers. The sky is a beautiful color pink. How do they match yours? I admit there are many people who have influenced my life and who deserve credit for how they have helped me. And I have listened to the advice and opinions of others, but ultimately, the biggest single factor that determines where you and I currently find ourselves in your life is you. Okay, some sumo wisdom. If you want to know who is most responsible for where you are in life, take a look in the mirror. Here is the challenge. We live in a climate and culture where this out outlook is not always encouraged. How comfortable do you feel about standing up and saying, I take full responsibility for my life. Let's explore why many people would not only feel uncomfortable saying that statement, they would also disagree with it. I call it the BSE crisis. The great BSE crisis. I meet individuals who believe that their current circumstances in life have, number one, nothing to do with previous decisions they have made. Number two, nothing to do with the actions they have taken. And number three, nothing to do with the attitudes they have adopted. Apart from that, they take full responsibility for everything. If life is not as they would want it, they can quickly play their BSE card, blame someone else. I mean, what can I do? They ask. It's not my fault. Someone else is to blame. Not only do they carry their own personal BSE card, they also tend to wear a powerful 
wear a, a powerful, a particular t-shirt. Confused? Let me explain. Imagine for a moment that how you felt or what you believed about yourself was written on your t-shirt. Some t-shirts may have the phrase, I am confident, or I feel good about myself, whilst others may have, I lack self-belief, or I don't like people. I have met a few of those. BSE card carriers, though, wear one with the message, victim. Wearers of this t-shirt tend to think, say, and believe the following. This is my life, and I must grin and bear it. It's not my fault. Life is not fair. I've never been lucky. I blame the government, my parents, the traffic, my boss, my teachers, my kids. I cannot really change or influence my situation. I'm not capable, I'm not confident, I'm not good enough. When a group of victim t-shirt wearers get together, they hold a blame storming session. So my wisdom. The personal stuff. Have I ever worn the t-shirt? You bet. I failed my geography A level and blamed the teachers until someone pointed out that not every, every pupil in the class had failed. In my early days of business, I blamed the economy for my lack of success. Things were not but Things were not buoyant when I began, but it was easier to use the excuse of outside factors than to take a look at my own actions and decisions. More recently, I failed to secure a place as a main speaker at a large sales conference. I had put a great deal of time and effort into persuading the organisers that I was the ideal speaker for this high profile event. When the no thanks news came through, I was gutted particularly when I found out who had been chosen instead of me. I muttered to myself, that's not fair. I'm a far better speaker than him. It took several hours before I realised that I was wearing the victim t-shirt. If you had to write a message or a slogan that sums up how you currently feel about life, what would it be? Write the word or phrase in the box below. The message on my t-shirt would be, automatically the word that comes through to the word that come through for me to me was awesome i just have awesome right on my t-shirt awesome 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 so why wear the t-shirt in the first place here are four reasons why we might be tempted to wear the victim t-shirt reason number one you feel you have no other choice that's just the way it is there's nothing i can do is the mantra of people who play the victim role you can adopt a fatalistic, oh, a fatalistic, a fatalistic approach to life and to the inevitability of being the victim. Reason two, low self-esteem and poor self-esteem. Either of these factors can distort your view of how you see a situation. Your esteem and self-image can be affected by life events and you are more vulnerable to seeing them damaged when you have experienced a major change, such as a divorce, redundancy or an illness, such events can knock your self-confidence, which in turn affects how you think and feel about yourself. Reason three, it becomes a habit. Some people have been putting on the t-shirt so regularly <clears throat> that they now wear it without even being conscious of the fact. Their wardrobe consists of a whole range of styles and colors of victim t-shirts, one to suit any occasion. Reason four, people actually enjoy wearing it. My research reveals that wearing the victim t-shirt can bring people many perceived benefits. People feel sorry for you and give you more attention. It can increase your own feeling of self-importance. It is a good excuse for not being able to achieve other things. I would have been able to achieve X if only Y had been more supportive. Blaming others frees you from the responsibility of taking charge of your own life. Okay, points to ponder. It's not easy to admit that you have worn the t-shirt. Maybe you haven't, but if you have, what has been your reason? Can you identify people you know who wear the t-shirt? What is your, what in your view motivates them to wear one? 
the personal stuff. When I became ill with chronic fatigue syndrome, I went from a high flying management position to invalidity benefit. Life did not seem very fair and for a while I wore the victim t-shirt. I used to queue up to collect my benefit on the same day pensioners got theirs. I was 24 years old. Talking about the weather and the price of baked beans become part of my everyday conversation and did little to make me feel better about myself. I eventually decided that I needed to excuse myself from the pity party and focus on what was still good about my life. I was surprised how much I found. For instance, I realised what an incredible wife I had and how fortunate I was to have so many supportive friends. We still had our own home and I found time to join a creative writing group. We even managed the occasional weekend away, courtesy of someone else's generosity. People are not always conscious they are wearing the t-shirt. The you might not be. Let's, ex let's explore some characters I have come across on my travels which may help you spot the signs more clearly. Victim t-shirt wearers on parade. First, let's meet Colin, who is in his early 30s and always has a reason for why, excuse me, <clears throat> why he can excuse himself. Okay, he always has a reason. reason. First, let's meet, Co let's meet Colin, who is in his early 30s and always has a reason for why he can never remain in a job for longer than three months. He claims he is the victim of office politics, a boss who feels threatened by him, jealousy amongst fellow co-workers, and finally, some plot by head office to make his life so unbearable he has no choice other than to resign. Colin is the master of conspiracy theories. On no occasion that I know of has he ever admitted that he might have something to do with losing his job. Dave has been made redundant. He spent months harassing an organisation for not appointing him to the position that, in his words, I was clearly right for. During this time, he failed to apply for any other job until he dealt with what he saw as discrimination. He did not specify on what grounds he was being discriminated against. Rather than believe someone else had been more suited to the position, he chose to be the victim. Sometimes people are discriminated against and it is right for them to fight for justice. But on other occasions, discrimination is not the reason for people's lack of success. They are. Several months ago, I was coaching Lucy, who believed that success was a matter of luck and that she was not lucky. It's all about being in the right place at the right time, she protested, and I never am. Rather than identify and develop her skills and abilities, she, she chose to believe that life would only get better when she got her big break. Her victim mentality verged on paranoia when she even blamed her accent. <laughs> she just made me chuckle. <laughs> People think I'm posh and are threatened by me, particularly Northerners. As a Northerner myself, I had to smile at such a comment. <laughs> Finally, Brian, an office worker I met on one of my courses, seemed to be full of regrets. I could really have some. I re I could really have made something of my life if it had not been for my elderly mother. She has been ill for over 20 years and I have had to look after her. Opportunities have passed me by, including marriage. But what else could I do? Well, what could he have done? Perhaps if he had seen himself as less of a victim of his domestic circumstances, his life could have been very different. Having a sick or elderly mother does not automatically require a person to remain single. Brian thought it did. Okay, the sumo wisdom. Taking personal responsibility frees you from the trap of blaming, complaining and resenting. And I've even put some asperis at the side of this last time I, I read it. I love how I know that everyone in this park, I mean there's youngsters over here playing football and they're not that actually too far away. 
and just, just the energy in the park it's just like they're all absorbing like the trees are kind of taking in all this sumo wisdom and it's just that's a beautiful energy because i just know that it's going to be kind of transmuted transmitted um you've got people playing tennis it's just well let me see if i can show you just um have a look i did want to kind of show you the clouds didn't i you got the moon up there just rather beautiful really anyway let's put you back down okay should we have a look at the well we've got some points to ponder first okay are we all lined up <laughs> you seem to be further away is you this way i don't know what's going on there okay points to ponder where are you most likely to wear the victim t-shirt at home or at work The consequences of wearing the victim t-shirt. Well, he's got a nice pink t-shirt on that boy has. Oh, he's showing me his football tricks now. Very good, very good. It makes them perform better, having an audience. The consequences of wearing the victim t-shirt. What do Colin, Dave, Lucy and Brian have in common? Simple. Wearing the victim t-shirt has consequences on your life. Oh, I think it says, it does say simple. Okay, simply simple. Wearing the victim t-shirt has consequences on your life. For them, these include a failure to fulfill their potential, missing out on opportunities because they were too busy feeling sorry for themselves to spot them. Other people failing to benefit from their talents, feelings of regret because of what might have been, and stagnating rather than growing as people. Also, their stories indicate the formula on which their lives are built. Sadly, it's not E plus R equals O, but E equals O. They have all failed to realise that it's not just the event, but their response that has influenced their outcome. If Colin, Dave, Lucy and Brian change their response, they'll also change their outcome. That's, that's of course, if they wanted to. Remember, some people enjoy wearing the victim t-shirt. Hi, Mr. Fly, have you seen him? Okay, points to ponder. You may have worn the victim t-shirt regularly or just on the odd occasion, but when you have, what have been the consequences both to you and to those around you? What about the people you know who wear one? What has happened in their lives as a result? Okay, Sumo Wisdom, another one that I've highlighted here. Let's read it. Your choices are significant. What you do affects who you are and where you end up. Having explored the consequences of wearing the victim t-shirt, you may decide you want to stop wearing one. I want to examine why changing it can be difficult. There are three reasons. Removing your t-shirt means changing your status quo. You and I are creatures of habit, live in a life where we do not take responsibility for our actions and where we can blame others for our circumstances is convenient. It becomes a part of our normal way of living. It's what we are familiar with. To change means to move out of our self-centered comfort zone. To some people, this is neither appealing nor easy to do. Sumo Wisdom. When you wear the victim t-shirt, you become a passenger in your life and allow circumstances and other people to determine your direction. Okay, I think we've got to pay attention to this next bit here. Removing your t-shirt means going against the current fashion. In the past, when people had accidents, we saw it as part of everyday life, and most people were usually prepared to accept some, if not all, the responsibility. Not anymore. Our minds are bombarded with messages such as, where's the, where there's blame, there's a claim. And in some cases, that is appropriate. 
but we are now encouraged by some parts of society to feel like victims who are powerless to help others. Blame your teachers, blame your parents, blame the government, blame anyone but yourself. We are told we are victims of stress, long hours and unsafe food. Seeds of victim mentality are sown when we are asked questions such as, have you felt stressed in the last month? Or have you ever experienced bullying at work? Clearly some people do genuinely face such challenging situations, but tackling the problem whilst wearing a victim t-shirt will not help. Sumo wisdom. Some people have become very aware of their rights, but less aware of their responsibilities. Removing your t-shirt requires courage. It can be uncomfortable to admit to yourself that you have been wearing a victim t-shirt. This is even harder to do if you feel you are a genuine victim. So let, so let me be clear. I do believe there are innocent victims in life who could justifiably wear the t-shirt. However, some genuine victims choose not to. They decide not to allow events or circumstances to define their identity. Why? Without exception, the people I have met who have been able to move on have done so because they hold on to the following belief. So my wisdom, I am not always responsible for what happens to me, but I am responsible for how I choose to respond. The personal stuff. In March 1993, my wife Helen and I went out for our regular Saturday morning shop. My desire to be back to watch a football programme meant we left town earlier than Helen would have hoped. As we drove out of the town centre, a bomb exploded. It killed two young children. Helen, who was eight months pregnant at the time, had walked past the bin where the bomb was planted minutes before it detonated. Those families who lost their sons that day were genuine, innocent victims. I met the father of one of those children recently. Remarkably, he seemed to possess no enduring bitterness and appeared to adopt the following attitude. Sumo wisdom, even if you are a genuine victim, ultimately you need to learn how to become a survivor. On a lighter note, during one of my presentations, I produced a large yellow t-shirt with the word victim emblazoned across the front. I was making the point that we need to get rid of this type of t-shirt at the end of my talk, a man approached me wondering if I sold victim t-shirts. He knew plenty of people where he worked who he could sell them to. In case you are wondering, I don't sell victim t-shirts. Points to remember. What's holding you back from, rem from rem removing your victim t-shirt? So we know some of the reasons why we wear the t-shirts and why it can be difficult to change. But if you want to change it, how do you go about it? How to change your t-shirt first of all you must decide you want to then you need to choose a new one with a different message the message i suggest is sumo when you wear this t-shirt you are deciding to shut up being a victim and moving on to taking responsibility if you want things to be different in your life you have to make different choices and take different actions the rest of this book will show you how to do this but you can make an immediate start by learning to mind your language. We need to remove victim language from what we say and what we think and replace it with sumo sayings. Let me give you some examples. You can come up with your own suggestion for the last one. Okay, so avoid victim language and then we're gonna replace it with sumo language. Life is not fair, that's victim language. Replaced with sumo language, I am unhappy about that, what can I do? This is just the way I am, how can I improve? There's nothing I can do, there's always something I can do. It's impossible, let's find a way. Who is to blame? How can we move forward? I am a victim, I am a survivor. What's the point? and then there's a blank here. The personal stuff. As I review the list, I admit that my language has not always been overflowing with sumo sayings. In the past, I have given up too easily because there's nothing I can do. Rather than choose the more empowering statement, there's always something I can do. 
I have found it interesting how closed my mind has become to exploring further possibilities when I have adopted the attitude, it's impossible. As soon as I put on the victim t-shirt, it's as if the solution seeking part of my brain goes into temporary shutdown mode. When you wear the t-shirt, you stop looking at how to help yourself. You'll find some great antidotes to this when we explore the next principle. So points to ponder. Which victim sayings have you found yourself using? Choose an example of a sumo saying that you are going to be more conscious of using in the next week. Okay, in a nutshell, let me be really clear about what changing your t-shirt does and does not mean. So, so, to do so, I am going to answer the two most common questions that people pose when we're exploring this topic. Number one, does removing the victim t-shirt mean I have to accept full responsibility for everything that has happened to me, even when it's not my fault? No, removing the t-shirt simply means you accept responsibility for how you respond, for how you choose to respond to an event. You do not necessarily have to blame yourself for what has happened, but you should accept responsibility for how to move forward. Number two, but what if I do believe I have been unfairly treated or discriminated against? Are you suggesting I simply get over it and stop making a fuss? Absolutely not, and categorically not. Absolutely and categorically. Absolutely and categorically not. That means beautiful. The key is not to remain helpless. You may have been a victim, but you must see yourself as a survivor. You must assert yourself when necessary and do all you can to challenge inappropriate actions by an individual or organisation. I shared that song today as well, Survivor. Destiny's Child on the community tab. The message from this chapter is that some people consciously or unconsciously habitually wear the victim t-shirt. In doing so, they ab abdicate responsibility for their lives. Removing the t-shirt is an indication that no matter what life has given us so far, or will give us in the future, we take control of our response. If you want your life to get better, you'll never be able to achieve it until you remove your t-shirt. Change does not happen when circumstances improve. Change happens when you decide to improve your circumstances. Get off autopilot and take back the controls of your life. That's your sumo wisdom to finish with. Oh, we've got a sumo summary. Okay. Shut up the autopilot syndrome and move on to self-awareness. Shut up blaming someone else and move on to personal responsibility. Shut up missed opportunities, regret and stagnation. Move on to fulfilling your potential, using your talents and growing as a person. Shut up being the passenger. Move on to being in the driving seat of your life. Shut up speaking victim language. Move on to speaking sumo language and shut up wishing your life will get better. Move on to making it so. Check you out, best hat. Develop fruity thinking, chapter three. I will catch you guys soon. Do you want to have a look at this moon? Let's see if I can, can you see the moon now? Not really. Mm. I will catch up with you guys soon. So until then, enjoy your evening or your day or your morning. Listen, whatever, just enjoy, enjoy your now. Enjoy your now. Okay, take care. Much love. Bye for now. I'm pushing the wrong kind of button to cut you off. I'm going to cut you off now. Bye for now.